In today's video, Constructing the Dining Room. Before working on the dining room, the second floor must be constructed. To do so, cardboard is sandwiched between a top and bottom layer of foam board constructed earlier. This is not only sturdy, but will enable me to move the second floor around effortlessly. The same technique will be used for future floors in the dollhouse. To seal the brakes, paper tape is used. Off camera, Matt Mod Podge was brushed over the paper tape. The media board was also set up to display windows containing French doors which open. The middle section is 20 inches across and the side sections 10 inches across for a total of 40 inches. The wall is marked at 15 inches on the media board and will be cut off at the top. A piece of foam board for the middle section of the media board is cut, doubling it, then glued on.
6 inches as marked, then cut off each side of the media board. Placement of the windows is marked at 13 inches high, then centered at 2 and 3 8 inch from the crease of each side panel. The perimeter of the window frames are traced onto the media board then chiseled out. To make the screened windows, four and a quarter inch by 12 inch square dowels are used. Each are then cut, constructed, then painted dark brown. The screen is cut, then glued to one side of the window frame. After the screen is dry, the excess is trimmed along the edges.
To make the window boxes, three one inch by eight and three eighths inch strips were cut for the top and the sides, and one one inch by seven and three eighths inch strip cut for the bottom. For a bit of interest, the top strips are allowed to hang over the edges. Dollhouse bandages are then applied to the bottom corners of each box for a finished look. The dining room walls were repainted antique white because the dark brown was much too drab for the dining space. Plexiglass panels cut to 3 inches by 7 and a quarter inches are glued inside the door panels. Now the screen window is installed, then strips are inserted along the perimeter back side of the window. Each strip measures 5 8 inch by 8 inches for the sides and half inch by 6 inch for the top and bottom.
Four quarter inch by 12 inch round dowels and small wooden jewelry beads are used to create the curtain rods. Two rods will be made per window. One set for the shears and one set for the curtains. Using wood glue, the beads are attached to the rod ends. These are the fabric selections for the windows. Large paper clips are used for hooks to hang the rods, four per window. A stray pin is used to punch holes in the wall for the hooks, then clear gel glue is placed on the hook ends and openings. Metallic gold chalk paint was used to cover the curtain rods. I didn't particularly like this color because of the dull look. It took several coats to cover the rods. The technique used to make my vintage curtains will also be used to make the dining room curtains. My curtains, which belonged to my grandmother, were purchased sometime in the 1970s from Sears. Using a quarter inch stitch, the curtain fabric and muslin are sewn together, leaving an opening to turn the curtains inside out. Four panels are sewn, two for each window. Sections are then pinched in the curtains like those in my curtains. I decided to use my tailor's board and universal stewardess steam travel iron to press out the curtains and shears.
If you would like to see how the iron is set up, I will leave the link to the video in the description. The shear edges are pressed under a quarter inch, then sewn all the way around. Each pinch section is tacked into place. Small coated paper clips are used to make the curtain hooks. These are used rather than the original because over time the others will rust and stain the curtains. On the right side is the real curtain hook while on the left side is one made from a paper clip. These are some of the curtain hooks I've made. The curtains will be used in another part of the project. Poster board cut to 13 and 3 8 inch by 24 and a half inches is used for the dining room floor. I chose this option because I might want to change the dining room decor in the future. I got the idea for the floor from Aira with Bentley House Minis when she did the floor for her Beetlejuice kitchen. I'll leave the link to the video in the description. Traditional beige was used for the base coat and watered down to mute it. After drying, antique copper, metallic gold, royal gold, and treasure gold were splattered on the floor. After drying overnight, one coat of gloss smudge podge was applied. Here's the first wall hanging for the sconces. The sconces were purchased from a shop on SD. A link to it will also be left in the description. To construct the wall hangings, three quarter inch square dowels cut to two inches are glued together, then basswood scraps are used to cover the front, back, top, and bottom.
Off camera, the wall hangings were painted two coats treasure gold and one coat gloss mod podge was applied. The floor is laid down first. Now the dining room walls. Foam board pieces are cut to measure to cover the backs and tops, then paper tape is placed over the brakes for a clean finish.
Join me next time for the continuation of the Deluxe Reading Dream Build. Until then, thank you so very much for watching.